All right, everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Mike, also known as FlyFisher530. So before this video gets started, I need to make a quick correction on something I talked about in the video, um, and that is the type of rod we were using. I was under the impression we were using spay rods, and we were not. And um, what we were using is what I'm holding here is an 11 foot, what's called a switch rod. And I'll start by describing what a spay rod is. A spay rod is a two-handed rod they're generally about 13 to 14 feet long. Quick history, they were developed in Scotland on the River Spey in the late 1800s. Uh, they started out as long wooden poles, 16 to 20 feet long is my understanding. And they were developed because the river was very wide. There's a lot of brush on the back side of the, the river. So there's no room to back cast in traditional fly fishing. So these long wooden poles, they would basically cast out mainly in front of them um, with maybe a slight pitching of the rod behind you until you cast forward. But the line would not be flying, you know, several dozen feet behind you uh, into the brush. Um, so the casting technique was a forward casting technique on these spay rods. Like I say, they're 13 to 14 feet long. A typical fly rod, which I've been using for years, has 9 to 10 feet long. Um, and a switch rod, which is what this is, kind of fills that gap in between. And maybe that's why they're called a switch rod, because uh, it's like a switch hitter. Um, they can be used technically for both, uh, both things. You can, you can back cast with these rods, but you can also do this forward casting technique with a longer rod that allows you to cast a lot further. And uh, so that's what I have here. I have a six weight switch rod. Um, not that expensive, it's about a $200 Reddington rod. And uh, on that, I have a nine to 10 weight, weight reel. And the reason for that is we're using a Skagit line that's much thicker than your typical fly line. And you need a large arbor reel to hold that thicker line. Um, so you'll hear me several times in the video talk about spay casting. We're technically using a switch rod and using a, a roll cast, which is a type of spay cast uh, techni technique. Um, but uh, I'll put the link down below with more information on you know, the differences between spay casting and, and uh, uh, switch rods. Um, it is kind of interesting. I'm really looking forward to using this more because in California, we have a lot of rivers with brush on the backside of them and uh, that limits your ability to use a traditional fly rod. So. Um, I learned a lot this weekend. I had a blast with these guys, Jake, Cody, and Taylor. Um, I really think we had a, a great time and I hope you enjoy the video. Stay tuned. After leaving my hometown in the Sierra foothills, I only had a two and a half hour drive to the meeting spot near Reno, Nevada with Jake, Cody, and Taylor. The Sierras had received up to 12 feet of snow during a recent storm system that had occurred just a few days earlier and the drive over Donner Summit was just spectacular. I met the guys in a grocery store parking lot where we picked up supplies before heading north. Taylor had brought a beautiful camper trailer that would be awesome to have in the event of bad weather. From the parking lot, we headed north for a half hour drive to Pyramid Lake. This was my first time back to this lake in over 30 years and the weather was just perfect. After getting to the lake, Taylor found us a great dispersed campsite right on the edge of the lake and we quickly went about setting up our rigs for the two day fishing trip we had planned. 
All right, guys, we are here at Pyramid Lake this weekend, and um, man, I cannot wait to show you uh, how beautiful this area is. I was here last probably 30, 35 years ago, and uh, it's still pretty much the way I remember it. It is a gigantic lake, uh, Lake Pyramid. It's about 90% the size of Lake Tahoe. Uh, it's an ancient lake, uh, remnant of Lake Lahontan. Uh, which was covered much of western Nevada uh, during the last ice age when glaciers were melting off tons of water. It formed a huge inland lake that Lake Lahontan was one of those lakes. And Pyramid Lake is like the last remnant of that lake um, because it's the deepest area of Lake Lahontan. So in this lake there are really large trout. These uh, um, Lahontan cutthroat trout are in this lake uh, is what most people go after for fishing. I'm going to be using a spay casting rod for the very first time. It's a, it's a longer rod for fly fishing than you'd normally use. It allows you to cast out further, and uh, we need to do that because we're going to be shore fishing this weekend. Um, but yeah, let me show you the camp real quick. If this thing pans around with me, you can see the lake here. And uh, over here, I have my crew. Taylor, wave to the camera. These other guys you can't see. Jake and Cody, come on up over here for a second. Rather around. All right, so on my far right is Taylor, who I've just met this weekend. Seems like a nice dude, we'll find out. He's all right. Uh, <laughs> he's all right. Here is uh, Jake on my, my right and Cody on my left. Uh, all good guys I've been out with before. We actually got stuck in the snow, if you saw that video, quite a ways back. We learned a lot that day. What not to do, especially, what right? Do. So, a scary day. <laughs> but, uh, and Taylor, you've fished this lake a lot, haven't you? Probably the last 12 years. Last 12 years, yeah. So I'm excited. Taylor's going to be the one showing me how to do the spay casting and uh, looking forward to that this weekend. So stay tuned, guys. We'll show you what we're doing next. All right, so we are getting ready to go fishing here, and uh, so it should be fun. I've never done this kind of uh, fly fishing before. Um, I've done shore fishing for on lakes before, but never with this long of a pole. So it should be fun learning a new casting technique, and uh, Taylor and the guys are going to be helping me out here. But take a look at how beautiful the lake is today. It is just gorgeous out here. There's a little bit of wind on the water, which is just perfect. Kind of hides the line from the fish. So, um, see how we do. Nice, beautiful day. And uh, we're gonna give it our best shot. We'll see how we do. Good sign that these boats are keeping coming back through. As we walked down to the water, I could tell from the guys they were skeptical of the fishing today. Apparently the warm weather does not make for great fishing on the lake, as the fish tend to move down to deeper and colder water within the lake, away from the shallow shoreline. Taylor was a great instructor and it was fun to fish with a new rod and casting technique. This is also known as Skagit casting, forming a deep loop in your line and basically throwing forward a roll cast, allowing the line dragging in the water to load your fly rod and give it the energy to throw the line forward. As it goes with most times I go fishing, getting snagged on rocks seems to be par for the course. Taylor was nice enough to let me have his rod to fish with while he unsnagged my line. And then, of course, it happened. Oh, hell yeah, let's go, Mike. Strip, 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 strip. Put your GoPro on, Mike? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, a little 20, 23, 24. Yeah. Right in here. Keep coming out. Nice. Real. Real, real, real. Come on, buddy. Yeah, keep that rod tip up. 
There you go. Yeah, pull him this way. Head up on the water. Come on, buddy. There you go. Head right up. Keep that rod tip high. Rod tip high. Now lift him to the surface. Nice job, Mike. Nice, Mike. First pyramid fish. How was it, Mike? <laughs> nice, man. Thank you. Awesome, you man. Let's get some uh, photos. He was on that bottom bug. This is where having the bigger net. Get the net underneath him. There you okay, go. You ready here? Huh? Yep. He's strong. They're a little bastard. Oh, I got something though. That's all right. Well, it wasn't the best presentation and release, but hopefully he grows to be much bigger and gives another angler the joy of catching him again someday. Although the fishing started out in a great way, it actually turned out to be incredibly slow. We took an afternoon break and then went back for another attempt near sunset. Well, we're heading down again. First day, second attempt at fishing. First fish was pretty nice. I want to see if we can do a little better. Sunset fishing was no better than when we arrived, so we made a nice campfire, Taylor cooked up some great burgers, and we spent the night talking about nothing in particular. All in all, it was a great day getting together with both old friends and new, and for me, hooking the largest trout I have ever caught. So that was that first morning, Jake. Good man. <laughs> Tell me no about cameras, it. please, no paparazzi. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, we got the paparazzi big time right now. I'm coming down. All right. Well, good morning, guys. We are just getting started here on our day two at Pyramid Lake. Um, it's been slow. The fishing's been really slow, but we've been having a good time hanging out with friends here, uh, Taylor, Jake, and Cody. It's just been awesome hanging out with those guys. And uh, we're gonna give it another shot here today. Um, but it's a beautiful, beautiful lake here. I haven't been to Pyramid Lake in years. And this is just a huge lake. It's a gorgeous lake. Um, and there's some big trout in here, really big. So we're gonna give it another shot today. Got our camp over here. And uh, 
yeah, we'll see how we do. I have no idea. I'm hoping it's better today than yesterday, but you just never know when you're fishing. So um, stay tuned, guys. We'll let you know how we're doing. All right, well, we're gonna give it another shot here again today, guys. See how we do. Beautiful out here. Well, there's no way to sugarcoat this trip. The fishing sucked. We took a break from morning fishing to play some cornhole, and it is amazing how competitive these guys are. They obviously play this way more than me, and it was a fun break from the fishing. We gave it another go in the afternoon, but the fish were just not biting along the shoreline. By early afternoon, Jake and Cody had to leave while Taylor and I stayed a little bit longer. I gave fishing one last shot in the afternoon, but it just wasn't happening, so I started to pack up and get ready to leave. I said my goodbye to Taylor as he was staying a while longer and headed back home. I had such a good time with these guys and definitely plan to go back to Pyramid. The Lahontan Cuddy I'd caught was far from the largest you can catch in this lake, but I am now hooked on going for an even bigger fish next time. Look for more adventures with these guys in the coming months as we have plans to fish some other great spots within Northern California and Nevada.